Astronomy has given us a blueprint of how our universe works, including the arrangements and orbital alignments of our planets in the solar system. So far, we already know that all the planets align on the same elliptical plane, orbiting around the Sun in the same direction. But we might have taken this knowledge for granted and forgotten to ask one fundamental question. How did this alignment happen? And how does it look so perfect in a universe filled with so many random processes? Well, we've broken down all the answers in today's video, where we look at how the planets landed on the same orbital plane. In today's solar system, all the planets seem to rotate around the Sun on the same orbital plane, most of which rotate in the same direction, save for Uranus and Venus. But something happened that caused all the planets to land on this same level of rotation of the Sun, and it all happened some 4.5 billion years ago, at the birth of our solar system. How the solar system formed our solar system was formed in the same way most star systems are formed, from the collapse of part of a giant molecular cloud also known as a stellar nursery. These stellar nurseries, also known as nebula, contain the basic matters of gas, dust, and chemical elements needed for the fundamental basis of planetary and star formation. This formation process began some 4.6 billion years ago with a stellar nursery containing mostly hydrogen and helium and small traces of other heavier atoms. These dense molecular clouds are usually warmer and tend to produce stars of varying solar masses. Molecular clouds like the one that led to the creation of our solar system typically have densities of 100 particles per centimeter cube, which from our own perspective is incredibly dense, but not dense enough to cause the formation of a star. As such, the process of star formation usually needs to be triggered by some external event or force from outside the cloud's periphery. In the case of our solar nebula, our star formation was most likely triggered by a shock from gravitational waves that resulted from the explosion of a supernova. This explosive shock hit the nebula at incredibly high speeds, causing parts of it to begin to condense with atoms colliding into each other in a slow but ever-increasing manner. The action of this stellar shock causes atomic compression within the solar nebula. In other words, the death of one star results in the birth and creation of another. In the end, the death of our own Sun, which would end in a supernova, would create the perfect interstellar shock to kickstart the creation of another star system. This process is known as self-propagating star formation. At this point of star formation, the nebula begins to spin faster as it collapses and condenses following the action of conservation of angular momentum. This is a process whereby, as materials within the nebula continue to collapse, the atoms within it begin to collide at increasing frequency, resulting in a protostar, which spins and generates heat. A protostar is the very first stage of a star formation, as it is still a dense hot ball of gas that is still pulling mass from its parent nebula and is yet to achieve hydrogen fusion. In the case of our Sun, which is a low-mass star, the protostar stage of our solar system lasted for about 500,000 years. Protoplanetary Disk At first, the protostar pulls in atoms and dust from all angles as it rotates and spins and carries on for about 100,000 years. During this time, competing forces of gas, pressure, gravity, rotational forces and magnetic fields cause the contradicting nebula to pull in gas and dust at the most prevalent angle. In other words, you have a forming star that moves from pulling in gas and dusts from all angles, slowly forming a protoplanetary disk in which it pulls these cosmic materials from a single angular plane. A prime example of how angular momentum works is to watch how a figure skater spins, maximizing the use of conservation of angular momentum. She increases her speed by slowly drawing her arms and legs closer and as such decreases her moment of inertia. This brings parts of our body closer to the axis and as such causes her skating dress to slowly spin to the middle plane of her body mass. A protoplanetary disk is similar to the skating dress of a figure skater. As the central mass begins to increase its speed, the disk forms at the most prevalent angle relative to the central mass. In the case of a nebula, the cloud begins to rotate and flatten out to form a flat pizza dough of gas and dust around the star. This is how most planetary disks are formed and forms the basic foundation of how planets come to rest on the same orbital plane. But in the case of our solar system, the planets have to first form before they are able to rest on the same plane. Planetary Formation 
At this stage in our solar planet's formation, much of the dust and gas materials within the protoplanetary disk are still being pulled into the protostar, but something else is going on as well. Forces of gravitational interaction and electrostatic forces between dust and ice particles cause these particles to collide and clump with each other. This clumping process is known as accretion and happens simultaneously alongside the star formation. In other words, dust particles accrete into pebbles. Pebbles clump into larger rocks, and these rocks grind together to form planet-sized objects. These planet-sized objects formed the building blocks of planets which are known as planetesimals. This formation process of the planets competes against stellar winds which are particle energies emanating from the Sun as it flows through the early solar system driving out much of the gas from the system. This outflow of stellar wind caused by the Sun is commonly more prevalent closer to the Sun. This is why we have more terrestrial or rocky planets closer to the Sun and more gas giants on the outer edges of our solar system. System. The rocky planets are exposed to more heat, radiation and stellar winds and as such are smaller with more iron cores and rocks present on their surfaces. Meanwhile, planets on the outer solar system receive very little impact from stellar winds and as such still accumulate much of the gases and ice present in the early stages of the solar system. These outer planets were able to grow to much bigger masses with only small rocky cores deep within the planet. This entire planetary formation process takes place within the protoplanetary disk surrounding the Sun and as such the resulting planets maintaining the orbital lane within which they were formed. This also explains why the planets all orbit the Sun in the same counterclockwise direction, similar to the movement of the protoplanetary disk that resulted in their formation. This is also evident in the axial rotation of each planet, as they all rotate in the same counterclockwise direction, save for Venus and Uranus. It is believed the anti-clockwise axial rotation of these two planets was caused by a collision from large moon-sized objects that tilted their rotation in the opposite direction to the rest of the solar system. The orbital movement of planets on an elliptical plane around the Sun is also evident in the movement of asteroids and moons around the planets themselves. A very astute example is the case of Saturn's rings. Saturn's rings. Being one of the four outer solar planets, Saturn was able to form rings resulting from pieces of asteroids, comets and shattered moons that collided and disintegrated before reaching the planet. These particles were captured by Saturn's powerful gravity and are made up of billions of tiny particles consisting of ice, dust and rock. One would expect that the diverse nature of these particles will cause some kind of randomness in their arrangement around Saturn, but over time they have all seemed to align in their perfect orbital ring formation around the mega planet. But unlike the Sun and planet formation, these particles that make up the rings around Saturn do not have enough gravity to maintain their position around the planet forever. As such, they will be slowly swallowed up by Saturn and scientists predict the rings will completely disappear in the next 100 million years. But it's one thing to observe certain phenomena in our own solar system, it's another to confirm similar processes ongoing in other parts of the galaxy. Over the years, scientists have discovered several star-forming nebula or stellar nurseries across the Milky Way galaxy. One of such is the Orion Nebula, which seems to be undergoing primary star formation processes. This is incredibly fortunate, because although we are able to theorize on the formation of our universe, telescopes such as the James Webb Telescope enable us to view these processes unfolding in real time, and they are indeed magnificent.